Welcome to the Real Estate Doctor channel. And in this video, I am going to cover 10 maintenance tips that I wish I knew as a new homeowner. If you've never purchased a new home before, you will more than likely find out the hard way about various maintenance items that you may not have been aware of. Of course, now that you're watching this video, you will not make these same mistakes, correct? When I moved here from Pennsylvania after living in a condominium that I had all the grounds and exterior maintenance taken care of by the condo association to my new home here in sunny Naples, Florida, there were many things that I did not know or think to do regards to home maintenance. And so I hope that you find this information helpful. I am Dr. Ron Repesey, your real estate doctor with William Ravis Real Estate right here in Southwest Naples, Florida, and I want to thank you for spending time with me on my channel. Before we jump into the home maintenance list, I want to congratulate you on your new home purchase, as this is a huge, huge thing, big deal, and you should be proud of yourself. Purchasing a new home is one of the largest purchases most people will ever make and often takes a lot of sacrifice to make it all happen. Moving into a new home is exciting, but often comes with some stress alongside the excitement, especially once you get settled and begin the process of home ownership, upkeep, and maintenance. YouTube is such a valuable resource, and the tips outlined may be things that are often overlooked. Most of these tips will be general maintenance items, and if you stay till the end, you will get a bonus tip as well. Owning a home is an adventure for sure. Tip number one, clean the gutters. The gutters are often overlooked because they are kind of out of sight, out of mind, and left unattended can lead to big problems. It is recommended that you have your gutters cleaned out one to two times per year. You especially want to have them ready for the summer rain and summer storm season. The gutter system is designed to divert water away from your home and when water backs up into this system, it can create flooding and water damage to your home. You'll want to have any trees that may be overhanging the gutter system that could be filling it with or clogging it with leaves, to have that gutter system cleaned out from debris or have the trees trimmed or removed as you work to keep those gutters cleaned out. And as an aside, I was just out yesterday and a friend of mine just had this happen. He uh, had gutters that were filled with debris and it actually backed up and created water damage down the walls and into the flooring of his home. So moving on to tip number two, check your roof. Your roof is the barrier for your home. And here in Southwest Florida, many homes have tile roof systems. And so you'll most likely want to know the age of the roof and the condition of the roof. Now, when you're applying for a mortgage, one of the requirements is homeowner's insurance. And right here, now in July 2023, obtaining homeowner's insurance is a big, big deal. It needs to be looked into actually prior to purchasing your home, especially if you're looking at a new home and you're going to be applying for financing. With that said, many insurance companies will determine coverage or if they will even provide insurance coverage based on the age and integrity of the roof. And having something known as a wind mitigation study or wind mitigation report will be a good idea and can even help save you money regarding your rate. Regards to roofs, you and your roofing company will be looking for, or you or your roofing company, but I recommend a roofing company, items such as cracked tiles or missing tiles, or even something known as lift with respect to any effects that the age or even prior storms may have had that can weaken the structural integrity of your roof. I do recommend that you get a home professional to take a look at this, uh, as doing it yourself and getting up on the roof can be very dangerous. And a professional roofer is trained on both how to navigate that roof and how to, to get up there and look for what they need to be looking for as far as damage. So moving on to tip number three, drain your hot water heater. Draining your water heater helps to remove sediment and it can extend its useful life. By draining the system, it can help flush out any debris that really only needs to be performed about once a year. So it's not that big of a deal or difficult to do. But of course, reference your owner's manual for tips and directions. Moving on to tip number four, HVAC system. Your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system is that critical system that keeps you comfortable, especially on those really hot and or really cold days, although we don't have too many really cold days here in sunny Naples, Florida. But anyhow, it is a good idea to hire an AC company to come out 
and service your system one to two times per year. If you live here in Florida, it will be helpful to have the drain lines cleared every few months, which is what I do in the really hot months of the summer, where you can either hire it out or you can learn to do some of this yourself by buying a, or purchasing a shop vac and perform the simple maintenance tip on your own, which can save you some money and time and especially save you from being steamed out and hot and bothered on these really hot days. When the drain line gets clogged with sediment, water then backs up into the drain pan, that is if you have a drain pan, and then shuts off what we call the float switch, which actually shuts down your air conditioning system. Having your AC system down is not fun, and it always seems to happen on those 100 degree days, and that is not good. And so doing this simple maintenance tip can help keep you comfy. And this will lead me right into the next tip, which is cleaning your air filters. So tip number five is cleaning your air filters. I've already given you a serious bonus tip with regard to regularly cleaning out that drain line. It gets clogged with what we call the snot. So you definitely want to get that drain line cleared out. Many people wonder when their AC system is shut down if something seriously is wrong or broke when it's really just those darn drain lines get clogged up. So a sh simple shop back and pouring down some vinegar in the drain line. You need to learn how to do these things, but simple tips of which I do myself. But back to tip number five, which was cleaning your air filters. You want to do this regularly, just as you do your drain lines. I do it on the same day. That makes it simple. And you clean out these with either uh, a rinsable filter like I have. You can buy simple air filters that you can wash out. But it's recommended that you buy the cheap filters over the heavy duty filters because most people do not remember to change out the heavy duty filters. And so this can cause freezing up at the compressor, which is usually outside of the home. Check out how many filters you have. And by the way, while you're at it, you may want to clean out some of your other filters or replace filters, such as a water filter that needs to be changed. We'll make note of what needs to be changed or replaced so you can do this on a routine basis. Make sure to refer to your owner's manual when, re manual when replacing these scheduled items. You might want to look into the filters, including the refrigerator, sometimes the dishwasher, and again, the water filter. When it comes to AC filters, as I said, the less expensive ones tend to be a little bit better idea only because many people forget to change out the ones that are good for about three months. And this can cause restricted airflow and create problems in your attempt to do good. I use the filters that I can rinse out. Again, this saves me money. You can look into that. Many of the Home Depots, Lowe's type stores carry these that you can put, especially for the uh, main return filter. Now, tip number six, clean out your dryer lint filter and dryer vent. You are saying, I already know that. Yes, you probably do. And yes, you probably don't do it or not nearly as regularly as you should. Many people forget to clean or clear out the lint basket alone, and this can lead to problems such as potential fire or excess heat buildup. When it comes to dryer vents, many never even do this at all. If you have a dryer vent that is a long distance from the dryer itself, then it is even more important to have this vent cleared and cleaned by a professional, as there could be lots of buildup over time that could cause potential fires. You may be able to do some of this yourself, especially if the dryer vent is very close to the outside vent itself. And then that run is not such a long distance, but it's best to leave these things, folks, to the professionals. Now, moving on to tip number seven, your smoke detector. So your smoke alarms. You are saying, how do I do that? There's nothing to do. Well, have you ever been woken up at night to that awful chirping sound? At least I have at two in the morning. Well, it was a good idea to change the batteries in your smoke alarm once a year to help prevent the chirping madness. Believe me, you will thank me for that. Also, it is recommended you test both your smoke alarms and your carbon monoxide detectors once a month to make sure that they are in good working order. Tip number eight, test your water pressure. If your water pressure is too high, it can actually damage some of your fixtures and you do not want water pressure that is too low so that your water is dribbling or your shower is dripping. Water pressure should generally be around 40 to 60 PSI and can be easily tested by purchasing a water pressure gauge for around $20 or having your local plumber come on out. Your local plumber can test this for you and adjust it as needed. Now, tip number nine, 
service your garage door. This is a good one. You were saying, really? When does anyone have any problems with their garage door? Well, the garage door has a heavy duty spring that assists the motorized garage door opener. And sometimes these springs break and the door will not go up if that happens. Besides a broken spring, you'll want to have your rollers and hinges lubricated every year or two to prevent all the squeaking and unnecessary strain on the motor, which can limit its useful life. I don't know what is worse, having your car stuck inside or your car stuck outside of the garage because when it's stuck outside, you know what? It's going to be a rainy, stormy day and you want to be able to drive your car into the garage. Also, the garage door may need to be adjusted as to how far it opens in the upper position and to ensure that it's, that it's closing properly, which it's not affecting the motor system by closing with too much pressure. Last but not least, there are child safety features preventing the door from closing on someone. And it's a good idea to have that checked during your routine maintenance. One thing you can do is lubricate the rollers and springs with an inexpensive lubricant, but check with your owner's manual. And if you are handy, you can definitely do this yourself, but still, it is a good idea to have a professional do this. All right, moving on to tip number 10, prevent nasty pests. Pests can be as little as little sugar ants, and I hate those buggers, comes around this time of year in the summer season, to the nasty cockroaches, I used to call them water bugs, to something as destructive as termites. Now, you need to determine what type of pests are common to your area and learn which ones to look out for. Here in Florida, we often even get palm rats or rats that climb the palm trees, and guess what? They can climb the palm tree near your roof, and then they jump up on the roof, and yup, they can get into your home. So it's a good idea to have your pest control service come out and protect your home. And if you have any trees that are overlying the roof line, you might want to have those trees trimmed and get those away to help prevent some problems. Now on to the bonus tip I promised. Did you ever talk to anyone about or hear about cleaning something known as the refrigerator coil? So we're gonna talk about the refrigerator coil. This is a big bonus tip right here. Most of them are at the bottom of the refrigerator. Well, I'm guessing you probably don't know this, but the coil on the refrigerator, and guess if you have animals, and guess if there's dust in your home, think you might have a little dust, this can collect on the coil. And of course, the refrigerator coil is designed to get rid of heat. So this helps assist the compressor from too much stress and strain and overheating. And so by keeping the coil clean and vacuuming under your refrigerator or buying a simple coil brush for a few dollars, you can seriously extend the life of this appliance. And you are welcome for that. There's your bonus tip. And there you have 11 tips for your new home. There are many things to consider and many things that tend to be misunderstood when it comes to buying and selling real estate. And so feel free to reach out to me anytime as I am happy to help in your real estate journey. Of course, thank you for watching your Real Estate Doctor channel. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I certainly do appreciate that. You may enjoy some of my other videos, which I will attach at the end of this video. And I also attach it in the description below. And this video will be on the hidden costs in buying a home and how you can reduce your expenses. So the hidden costs in buying your home and how you can reduce your expenses. Feel, feel free to comment below. And you can reach me at 239-331-5886. I am Dr. Ron Repesey with William Ravis Real Estate. Blessings to you. Wishing you peace, health, and happiness. And we'll catch you next time. Ba-boom.